today's video is brought to you by Midwest Homes for Pets. One of the reasons that people relinquish their dogs or make their dogs live outside is because they are difficult to potty train. My hope is that you'll share this video with those that might need it because it's a pretty easy thing to overcome once you know what you're doing. Also, make sure you click thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed too because there's a good chance you're probably a beginner if you're watching this video. I have lots of how-to videos on how to teach your dog the basics and even some more advanced stuff. In fact, check the description because I'll have a playlist on what to teach your dog in what order. For those of you that have had a dog in the past, how long would you say that it took you to house train your dog? Or are you still working on it? What things worked for you? What things didn't work for you? Tell me in the comments below. Many people think there's something wrong with their dog if they don't house train easily. They'll say things like, my dog is stubborn, he just doesn't get it. Uh, remember, we can't blame our dogs if they don't understand where they're supposed to do their business. It's our responsibility to teach them. It's very easy to get frustrated during the whole house training process as well. Uh, that's normal, but understand that Frustration will hinder our progress, so we have to reach deep and avoid that emotion during training. Luna, the Border Collie, and I are gonna show you how this is done, but we have to talk about a few things first. Be patient. You cannot house train a dog in just a few days. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, understand that it's not instinctive for a dog to want to do their business outside. We have to show them. Another very important thing to remember, Potty accidents in the house are never punishable. We wouldn't scold an infant for going in their diapers, for example. Also avoid these long-standing myths and remedies like uh, rubbing your dog's nose in their business or spanking them or yelling at them. These are all very counterproductive. They don't work, so just don't do it. The big picture with potty training is letting our dogs know that our house is their house. Instinctively, dogs don't like to do their business where they live and where they sleep, but they're not going to generalize the entire house as a single structure. They might think to themselves, well, I live in the living room, but the dining room's right over there. I'll just do my business over there. You may have noticed if you're struggling with this that your dog may pick out one, two, or three places within the house to regularly sneak off to to do their thing. Once they understand that the whole house is indeed their house, you'll see the accidents come to a halt, uh, but this will take a little bit of time. I'm gonna show you exactly the best process to go through in order to accomplish this in the most reasonable amount of time. If you hear nothing else in this entire video, hear this. Know that you need to become a master at controlling your dog's environment. In fact, this is an overall theme that you'll see time and time again as you continue to teach your dog. So now is as good a time as any to get really good at that. The best way to control your dog's environment is to supervise them 100% of the time. Obviously, that's impossible. We have to sleep sometimes, we have to go to work. So there are other ways we can control our environment. But remember, the number one mistake that people with new dogs make is too much freedom, too much trust, too early. I encourage responsible and humane crate training for purposes of house training your dog. If you succeed in making the crate a very fun and desirable place for your dog to be, then you can expect to really accelerate the whole house training process. Uh, but one thing's very important to understand, the crate is not a babysitter. We use the crate when we cannot directly supervise your dog because supervision is the most potent and effective way to teach our dogs all sorts of things. If you're supervising your dog appropriately and you catch them in the act of going, right as they're about to squat, for example, that is the time to interrupt their behavior and take them outside and encourage them to go in the right place, whereby you're going to reward them heavily for going. Now, if you don't catch them in the act, there's nothing you can do other than pick up the mess, throw it away, and do a better job supervising them in the future. Think of the crate as a bedroom for your dog, but you wanna make it the coolest, most awesome bedroom you can. You want them to love being in that crate. Midwest Homes for Pets is sponsoring this video, but I actually approached them because I've been using the crates for years. I find them to be very reliable, well-built, and the quality of them is fantastic. Plus, they give you a couple of things that a lot of crates don't. I really like the max lock door system on this Life Stages crate. You'll also notice that there's a divider panel in here, so that way you don't have to buy various crates for your dog. Let me explain. You see, when you are potty training your dog specifically, in the beginning stages, you want the crate to be just big enough for them to turn around and lie down in. Instinctively, dogs don't like to go potty where they sleep. Now, be patient with them. In the beginning, they may have an accident or two as they're making this connection, but it should be very short-lived. What's great about this max lock door system too is you don't have to kneel at all. You can pull it up, open it, and it gives you extra security around the entire 
perimeter of the door. These are also highly portable crates too. They fold up so you don't have to take them apart. They come fully assembled. So I highly recommend the crates. If you don't have one, I'll have a link in the description where you can pick one up if you need one. I'm here with Luna today. She's a Border Collie. She's six and a half months old and we're gonna go over how to teach our dogs to be comfortable with going in and out of a crate. During the introductory process, we wanna use really good treats to encourage our dogs to go into the crate voluntarily. We want to avoid waiting until we have to be somewhere and then throw them in the crate and leave them. That's likely to create all sorts of problems for you and your dog. Now, I like to actually use real meat to really give them that positive association with it very early on. What I like to do is open both doors. This is a double door crate. One of the benefits of having a two door crate is that you have the benefit of really opening it up. Uh, this will make it a little bit more appealing for your dog to go in and explore and they won't feel quite so shut in in the beginning phases. Uh, plus, it'll give you more options on how to position the crate within your home. It gives them a nice opening. It makes it a nice place. Very good, Luna. You're doing terrific. Always let your dog know that you appreciate when they're doing something you like and be very genuine about that. Do not try and rush this process. If it takes you a day or two, so be it. Just be patient. Now, most dogs will get pretty comfortable with this uh, early on. Patience fuels progress. Let's say you've already tried to rush the process and your dog is now terrified of the crate. You would just start over and do this all over. Now, you're gonna need to be a little extra patient with them. You get the best results when you're not rushing. Luna's doing really well. She's taking beautifully to this. So just to be clear, we're getting Luna comfortable with walking in and out of the crate on her own terms. Once you feel like your dog is comfortable going in and out of the crate like this, then you wanna introduce the idea of closing a door. This is the part where we want to be very delicate. This is also the point where a lot of people set their training back. The benefit of having a two door crate like this is you can close one door and then you can encourage them to go in with one door here. By closing one door at a time, you're making the crate a little bit smaller, but your dog still has the option to come out of the crate should they start to feel uncomfortable. Since many of you are beginners, this is also a far-reaching theme within our dog training. It's a good idea to break things down into smaller steps like this regularly. Now, once she goes in, if she's comfortable, I'm gonna close the door, but I'm only gonna do it for a brief moment as if to suggest to her, look, it's gonna close, but it'll open again, don't worry. Go on. The last message we want to send to our dogs is, hey, I'm going to put you in this crate and I'm going to lock you in it forever. Right. There you go. So watch this, here we go. It's the moment of truth. Yes, good. She reacted very well. I love that. I'm going to let her right back out. Um, during the first several days of introducing your dog to a crate, it's a good idea to just leave the doors open. Let them come and go as they please when you're supervising them. Avoid picking them up and putting them in the crate. Remember, the goal here is to get them to go in voluntarily. Some things that will help you with that are feeding them their meals in their crate, giving them good chew toys and other toys to play with in the crate. So you're starting to get the picture here. We want the crate to be an ideal place for them to be, and we want them to want to be there. It's also a good idea to have it next to your bed when you sleep at night. That way your dog will be less stressed out in this new environment here, because you're right there. So it might result in some sleepless nights in the beginning for you, but hey, that's what you signed on for when you got a puppy. Don't worry, it's only temporary. Keep it fun for your dog. Be very patient and understanding with the fact that they're new to this world and you'll be through this in no time. If your dog shows any signs of stress or discomfort when introducing them to the crate, that is your cue to slow down. Now, some dogs, especially dogs with severe separation anxiety or other types of severe anxiety, will never be okay with crate training. And that's okay. That's part of accepting our dogs for who they are. For those dogs, we'll bypass crate training in favor of more direct supervision while we work with them through those more complex issues. Let's talk about the maximum period of time that we would allow our dogs to be in a crate for at a time. The general rule is one hour per month of age. So a four month old dog would never be in a crate more than four hours at a time. Now the maximum time any dog should be in a crate is six hours and that's pushing it. So try and avoid keeping them in for that long. Since many of you are going to have your dog sleep in a crate, uh, you'll let them out in the morning, but then you may have to go off to work. So it's a good idea to schedule in some extra time to give them that workout so that you can at least put them back into the crate while they're tired before returning home to let them out for a potty break at lunch or something like that. Now, if you have to be gone longer than the allotted time, here are some options for you. 
You can take them to doggy daycare. Uh, you can get an exercise pen, also available from Midwest Homes for Pets. Uh, you can see the description for their website. Um, you could also put them in a bathroom or some other area where you can tolerate the potty accidents happening. You may also wanna put some puppy pads in there uh, in order to encourage them to go on the puppy pads. Now, house training will take a little bit longer if this is you, but hey, that's okay. So we're at the point now where Luna feels pretty comfortable in the crate. She doesn't appear to be stressing, and I'm even gonna treat her from outside of the crate just to let her know it's still a fun place. The first place we take our dogs after we let them out of the crate is outside or wherever you want them to go potty. Maybe you're using puppy pads or paper or whatever, but dogs are very keen to specific textures. Now, most people want their dogs to go on grass. So we're going to see if we can take Luna outside now and teach her where to go potty. Let's go outside. Remember when we talked about patience earlier? Make sure you bring that with you. Now, usually you're only gonna need about five minutes, but I'll tell you that five minutes can seem like an hour and a half sometimes because it's not the most exciting thing. You wanna set them up for success. You don't even wanna give them the opportunity to go potty where they're not supposed to. You wanna show them the right places to go and be as proactive as you can. It's best to have them on leash even if you've got a fenced area because you want them to go in a specific area. This will make your job a lot easier for picking up after them as well. As a general rule, especially in the beginning, I recommend taking your dog out every hour or so. Your dog's not going to have to go every time. That's okay. In the beginning, it's better to go out more times than you need to in order to ensure success. Let your dog sniff around too. Let him get comfortable. Uh, you don't want to wait until you're in a major hurry to potty train your dog. Make sure you've got treats with you too, just so that you can let your dog know, hey, look, I like that you went potty in the right place. That way you can follow it up with a reward the instant they do what you like. If she does go potty, I'm going to wait till she's done because I don't want to interrupt her and then I'm going to come in and reward her right after she's done. Go potty. That's what that's called. You did excellent, Luna. That's fantastic. And you got to do this a lot. Remember, it's not very natural for dogs to know where to go and where not to go. We, as people, have to show them how to do those things. Now, remember, don't make the mistake of thinking that you need to get your dog potty trained before you teach them their obedience. This is something that happens simultaneously with your basic training. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click thumbs up. Like me on Facebook too at facebook.com slash thezachgeorge and tell me how long it took you to potty train your dog or are you still going through the process in the comments below. Oh, one last thing. If I miss something specific that you're wondering about as it relates to potty training, post those questions in the comments below and I'll be posting a follow-up video uh, probably on my Facebook page so you'll need to like me on Facebook in order to see that video. Uh, so fire away, I look forward to seeing your questions.